third Sunday in ordinary time. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Seeing that many others have undertaken to draw up accounts of the events that have taken place among us, exactly as these were handed down to us by those who from the outset were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, I, in my turn, after carefully going over the whole story from the beginning, have decided to write an ordered account for you, Theophilus, so that Your Excellency may learn how well-founded the teaching is that you have received. Jesus, with the power of the Spirit in him, returned to Galilee, and his reputation spread throughout the countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as he usually did. He stood up to read, and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, the Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, and to proclaim the Lord's year of favor. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant, and he sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. The Gospel of the Lord. When I was ordained, not that many years ago, it was the custom to have some little cards printed which were distributed then among family and friends. Now written on each card was usually a verse associated with the sacred ministry. And I remember what was written on my card. And it's the same words that are in the gospel today. He sent me to bring good news to the poor. Now I ask myself from time to time, how am I fulfilling these words? Just as the Spirit anointed Jesus to spread the gospel, priests on their day of ordination are also anointed to do the same as Jesus did. Last week, if you remember, I spoke to you about the vocation of marriage and how good marriages don't surface overnight but have to be worked at. Well, preaching the gospel Sunday after Sunday also has to be swatted over. One priest described it thus, it's 90% perspiration and 10% inspiration, and I think he's right. Now, since the gospel, gospel means good news, since it is good news, shouldn't people be overjoyed on hearing it? Not necessarily. The gospel is not everyone's cup of tea, especially for those who shy away from living it in their daily lives. The good news is about a message of salvation for the poor in spirit. But not everyone wants to be poor in spirit, which is the opposite of being spiritually impoverished. The poor in spirit, in the gospel sense, are aware of their need of God. That's how we could describe them. They know their need of God. But our overly secularized worlds tend to leave God out of the equation. Or as one politician famously said, we don't do God. A few years ago, Pope Benedict wrote, Driving God from the landscape of our lives and indeed our wider society is a form of repression which causes harm to our souls. Repression in any sense, in any form, is bad. And we have Sigmund Freud to thank for telling us that. Repressing our religious sense will also have negative effects for us both spiritually and even mentally. He also said, that's 
Pope Benedict, smugness or complacency can also be a stumbling block to us hearing the gospel. It goes on. It causes our hearts to be closed and insensitive to the novelty of God. Getting to know God, he says, is like climbing a mountain. There are always new vistas to be seen the closer you get to the summit. Another aspect of the good news is that it needs to have an immediate efficacy and resonate with my present life situation. Old news is no news at all. God wants his word to come alive in us today, even as we listen as he did for Jesus on this occasion. If the gospel is good news, it's not only the good part of the news which is important, but also the new part. We say in the Our Father, give us this day our daily bread, not leftovers from yesterday. So, it begs the question, what is our Lord saying to us in today's Mass? What new thing is God asking me to do in my present life situation as a result of listening to his word? A good example, I think, is Pope Francis. Even though he's well into his 80s, his energy knows no bounds in opening up new vistas for the Catholic Church in our time. We could really take a leaf out of his book. Well, the first thing I think the Lord wants us to do is what he himself did at Nazareth on the occasion mentioned in the Gospel today. He closed the Bible, sat down, and reflected on it in silence. And that's what we have to do as well. Then, if we do that, there's a better chance that God's word will come alive for me today, even as I listen. Now, thank you for listening, and God bless you all.